Buenos nachos and welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we're gonna be reviewing a couple of different methods on how to remove surface mount capacitors. Without further ado, let's begin. We'll go ahead and test out our tools using, of course, no other than the Sony PlayStation SCPH5501 because it's got a lot of bad caps and that's what we want to try the tools out on. So without further ado, let's begin. Scary times await us all. The editor thinks I'm crazy and they're not wrong. One of the tools that we'll be reviewing for capacitor removal and a reinstallation possibly is this hands kit desoldering station. It's a T12A based soldering iron. However, it does not come standard with desoldering tweezers. So we do happen to have desoldering tweezers for it. And here is how the box looks it does come by default with one of these soldering iron tips and holders the next device that we'll be kind of trying out and reviewing is this right here it just says tweezers soldering tool 938 and it's marketed as a portable soldering iron so it doesn't come with the ginormous base like the Hako does I have conveniently taken apart this PlayStation 1. And of course, we already have our capacitor kit from console 5 for this PlayStation, which is a PU18. We're not gonna perform a complete recapping of this console. We're just gonna use our tools and try out the different methods of removal and installation of new capacitors on this board. All right, first, let's go ahead and try out a regular old soldering iron. Of course, if you wanna consider it a regular old soldering iron, that would be this Hako right here, the Hako 951. Tip I have in here is actually too small. It is the T15BC1. This is perfect when you want to solder, say, a Retro Gem Flex. We're gonna swap out to our other tip, which is this one right here. And that just so happens to be the T15D24. We've informed our editor that we're gonna be bringing online another view. I guess I should get my televisionary turned on real quick. And of course we want our vacuum because we don't wanna die from le fumes. All right, so the first capacitor we're gonna go ahead and try and desolder is gonna be one of these 224 volts. Get our vacuum going. We're gonna compare using this Hako against the two other devices that I mentioned. Round one, fight. So we'll attack this capacitor on this side right here. And we're just gonna lift up this side with tweezers just like that. It is still able to move, so that means it's dislodged. And now let's go ahead and get this side. And it should just lift right off in theory. Yep, and there it goes. And that was with this soldering iron using 450C. You probably can get away with 350. However, I'm using 450 and that's what I'm gonna use. So that was one removal. We'll go ahead and set that to the side. Now let's go ahead and try these other ones here. First up is a 938D soldering iron which is this guy. We'll go ahead and plug her in. Called it a him earlier, now I said her. We'll turn it on. This is gonna take a minute or two, I imagine. Pretty neat, you can adjust the temperature with this dial right here, and it's set to 315C, but I can adjust it even more right here. I'll probably put it at 350, and we'll see if that makes things easy. Right now, it has these types of tips. You can see that. All right, so my understanding is the theory is you can go ahead and go just like this, right in here. And and it should be able to just pick up this capacitor without a problem. Might take a second or two to heat up and then we should be able to lift it off. All right, it came up just like that. That's not too bad, not too bad. Probably take a little bit of getting used to, but I think that this will work out quite nicely. All right, so we just tried out the 938D from Yihua. Editor, you can go ahead and Google that and see if I've pronounced it correctly. Now we're gonna try our best to overload the circuit breaker. We're gonna go ahead and hook up this device now. And of course that is the hands kit. Now, as I mentioned previously, it does not come with this particular desoldering tweezer by default. You do have to purchase it separately. Let's go ahead and turn this off real quick. All right, get that turned on. And this is how the menu looks on this device. We're currently set for 350C. And the tweezers we have currently plugged in are these. These are the cheapo ones that it'll come with by default, which I don't like. We'll go ahead and give them a shot, but I don't really have much hope. So let's see, a 224 volt. We'll go ahead and take one from the bottom over here. This one seems to be having a little bit of difficulties. One side is removed, but the other one will not come off. And I can smell the fishery out of this cap, so we know it was already bad. I'm adding a little bit of solder in the hopes that this will help move this cap out of here. Yeah, I'm already not liking this because it touched that resistor down there, the 102. 
So the tweezers that it comes with by default are not the greatest. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and swap those out. So let me go ahead and turn off this device and we'll swap to the other tweezers that I have, which are way better. Get out of there. There we go. Let's go ahead and put this somewhere flammable. Now these, these right here are gonna do it. See if the building burns down. So this is what they look like. Much better than those other ones. See what kind of damage these can do. So we'll go ahead and try out these tweezers on the top over here. And it claims it's at 350C. I kind of have my doubts. We'll add just a little bit of solder in here. So I'm kind of guessing that it's not at temperature yet. So that bottom one looks like it's like it's touching, but the top one not so much. And I'm kind of wary of flooding this thing with more solder. Perhaps the tweezers need to be brushed off real quick. So let's go ahead and do that. And if I didn't know better, I'd say this cap was ready to remove, but it's just not coming off. Perhaps it's because I'm an evil lefty. There it goes. So it's perhaps possible that these, these tips right here are not angled correctly. So they may need to be twisted. However, I don't know how that'll happen with this hands kit tweezer. It's a real shame. I had a lot of uh, promise and hope for this one just because of how fine these tips are. Let me see if I can't adjust them with our pliers because I, uh, I want to give this tool a chance. I've adjusted it. I don't think that'll do very much for us though. We'll give this one more chance. So we'll see about this uh, C528. See if I can remove it from there. Maybe I need to raise the temperature a little bit, huh? There it goes. So you just need to add a little bit of solder and I guess they were misaligned. All right, now that we've removed the capacitors with each one of these methods, let's go ahead and see what it's like to install the new capacitors with each one. So up until this point, we've removed the 220 UF four volt caps. So we're gonna go ahead and install new ones now from console five. All right, we have our capacitors right here. Go ahead and set that to the side. So the first method that we'll use to reattach capacitors is our soldering iron, our standard soldering iron from Mahako. We'll go ahead and get our vacuum going here. And we are still using 450C for our temperature. We'll clean up these pads right here. Place one of these capacitors in the appropriate polarity. And if you take a look at the shape of the capacitors, it'll denote the polarity just by how it looks right there on the board. So let me go ahead and place this a little bit better here. So we'll begin by adding some solder to this. All right, and that's one side. Problem is this tip is not gonna fit in there. So we're gonna swap on over to our T15 BC1 and we are still at 450C. That's much better. That joint looks like it's not the greatest, so I'll just attach some more solder because it has flux on it. There we go. And I think that looks pretty good for the Hako, but you probably didn't expect anything less from the Hako. Now, what about these other two? Well, let's find out. So obviously the other two can't really do any desoldering unless I swap out tips, and that's not really what the point of the video is. I'm gonna have the Hako cheat for them, and I'm gonna clean up the pads for the remainder off camera. So we have three tries, technically four, if you count that hidden capacitor at the bottom, for these tools to reattach capacitors. So let's find out. Let's go ahead and go with the hands kit. Now, would I want to apply solid to the solder points first. Well, I'm glad you asked because that's what I'm gonna do. So let's go ahead and do that. Probably too dang much. That's probably too much, but we'll see what happens. Go ahead and pick up our cap and drop it in. Don't really know how well this thing will keep it aligned. I mean, it'd probably be best to just use some tweezers.
Well, not exactly off to a good start here for this one. I mean, I was kind of figuring you'd be able to place and drop the cap in here with these tools. Uh, I was doing it before, but I don't know. I guess it seems to not really be going as smoothly as I thought. Well, the bottom side looks like it's adhered. I'm gonna guess it's because we have solder on there and it does not like that. So let's go ahead and remove that solder, or at least most of it. I think if we remove most of it, we'll be fine. And we'll go ahead and add just a tiny bit of Flumex to this. I said tiny and a lot came out as you saw was not my intention. All right, so let's pick up this cap again. Guess that's not gonna happen the way I would envision. Sure, having some problems here. I'm gonna put a new capacitor on there to give this thing a fair shot. All right, so let's move it over. All right, so the top looks like it's adhered. And the bottom as well, but uh, I'm sure that joint is atrocious and it'll probably come apart real easily. So we'll go ahead and add some solder. Didn't look the greatest, probably could use some flux. Well, uh, that works, but that is a lot of solder. And what is going on over here? Is that just, yeah, that's, uh, that's fine. Now is this capacitor on here solid? The capacitor has a little bit of wiggle to it, but I'd expect that using this kind of tool because you can't really press down on the capacitor at the exact same time due to the limited area, which is why I wanted to do this test. I think if you had a little bit more room, this kind of a tool would be great. It is, however, great for removing, as you've seen. We've shown what it's like to install a capacitor with a hands kit. So now let's go ahead and go back to the Yihua, which, editor, you can go ahead and see if I pronounced that correctly. Most likely not. Next thing you know, you'll be saying that I mispronounced the Hako. All right, let's get our Yihua powered up. The Yihua. 938 triple D. And this thing does heat up pretty quickly as you can see. So let's see if we can grab the capacitor. We can, all right, and let's put it right there. Now what about getting it to adhere? Obviously we're gonna need a little bit of solder because I removed all the solder. And how about the top? very disappointed we're not getting the kind of joint that we need from the top there. Ah, there it goes. So we know the joints aren't looking that great, but that really doesn't matter because we can go back and touch it up with our soldering iron. I would probably say that the Yihua did have a bit of an easier time picking up a capacitor and putting it on the area it's supposed to go. So we're gonna give it props for that. wanted to touch up that joint because it bothers me that it looks like garbage. We've gone through the three various methods of removing and reinstalling capacitors. And in this, uh, of course, this test is kind of a little bit biased because all these capacitors are in a really close vicinity, so it's tougher. But when you're working on the PlayStation 1 console, that's kind of the case. So I'd probably say that the Hako is the best when it comes for removing and installing new capacitors. However, it will have difficulties if you want to pick and place capacitors. In which case, I'd say the Yihua 938D was the tool of choice. However, if you don't like the tweezers 
features that it comes with. There's always the ones that the hands kit sells, which you can buy for an additional price. And I did like this tool as well, but you can't pick and place the caps. And there you have it. There are the three different tools that I could use for removing and reinstalling new capacitors. I'd probably say that it's going to be a mix between the Yihua and the Hako FX951. However, I'm willing to bet that if I gave the hands kit tweezers another shot, it probably would also do an amazing job as well. When it comes to cost for these tools, the Hako is obviously the most expensive one at $300 plus, not including the tips. The Yihua 938D was $40 when I purchased it. However, I think it's a little bit cheaper now. The hands kit comes in at around the same price of about 40 bucks. However, you do have to purchase the tweezers separately, and I think those were an additional 10 bucks or so. If you found this video helpful or useful, please remember to leave us a like and subscribe, and thanks for watching. Until next time.